All right, welcome back to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, today's topic is all about coffee and arrhythmias. What's the data? What do you need to know? Now, when we look historically, about 80% of health practitioners generally avoid coffee in patients that have any form of cardiovascular disease, whether it's history of heart attacks going on, history of arrhythmias going on. And the question really is, is what is the data? Now, something that's really interesting is if you look at the 2021 European Society of Cardiology guidelines, what they state is that coffee consumption at three to four cups per day is being described as moderately beneficial in the prevention of cardiovascular disease. Now, there's no such recommendation by the American Heart Association, but it's still interesting to know that even the European authorities are starting to find that there is some benefit to coffee going on. Now, Today's topic is really about not just coffee, but looking at coffee subtypes and looking at what are their outcomes associated with arrhythmia, with cardiovascular disease, and of course, with mortality. You know, what makes coffee so interesting is it's not just about caffeine. It's about over a hundred different biological agents that have all sorts of beneficial effects. So let's take a look at a really interesting study. So in this particular study, the way that they described subtypes of coffee was whether the coffee was decaf, whether it was ground, or whether it was instant. And then they divided the people into how many cups per day they were drinking, whether it was zero, less than one, one, two to three, four to five, or more than five cups per day, and they compared to those people who were non-drinkers. Now, this data was collected from the UK Biobank database, and they were looking at about 450,000 participants. Average age was about 50s going on, and about half the participants were women. Now, the primary outcome was really, what about the specific coffee subtypes? So whether it's decaf, whether it's ground, et cetera, do they have any relationship when it comes to arrhythmias, cardiovascular disease, and mortality going on? So Let's get into the results. What did they find? Well, with ground coffee, what they found was that any ground coffee intake up to five cups per day was associated with a reduced risk of arrhythmias, cardiovascular disease, and all-cause mortality. Now, arrhythmias specifically, the risk was lowest with four to five cups per day. In fact, the risk was 17% lower going on. With all-cause mortality, the risk was lowest with two to three cups of ground coffee per day, and that risk reduction was lower by about 27% going on. And then lastly, cardiovascular mortality was lowest with four to five cups per day, and that risk was lower by 35%. So what it seems like with ground coffee is really the upper limit was up to five cups per day going on, where there was some beneficial effects on arrhythmias, cardiovascular disease, and all-cause mortality. Let's look at the next subtype, which was instant coffee. With instant coffee, they found there was a U-shaped relationship between instant coffee and cardiovascular endpoints. What does that mean? It basically means too little, and there wasn't any benefit or even harm going on, and too much, there wasn't any benefit or even harm going on. So when it came to arrhythmias with instant coffee, two to three cups per day had the lowest risk of arrhythmias going on, and the risk was lower by 12%. Heart disease was lower by about 9%, and stroke was lower by about 17%. And lastly, all-cause mortality was lower by about 11%. Now, that describes instant, that describes decaf, I'm sorry, that describes ground coffee. But what about decaf. So remember, we said it's not just the caffeine, but there are over a hundred different active ingredients that are found in coffee. So let's look at decaf. With decaf, there was a reduction in cardiovascular disease. It was about 6% lower. Congestive heart failure was lower by about 14% and all-cause mortality was lower by about 14%. But What's interesting about decaf is when it came to arrhythmias, there really wasn't any benefit there. The effect was neutral, meaning it didn't harm, it didn't help, it didn't really do anything going on. And the reason that this is so interesting is because when you look at the mechanism of caffeine, caffeine has an impact on adenosine. And what adenosine can do inside our body is adenosine can shorten what we call the refractory period of the top of the heart or the atrium and the bottom of the heart or the ventricle. So essentially, by shortening the refractory period, it can increase the risk 
of arrhythmias. So higher adenosine can increase the risk of arrhythmias and adenosine builds up as the day goes on. Now, caffeine, it actually blocks adenosine receptors. And so the thought process is by blocking those adenosine receptors, you may actually protect against arrhythmias going on. And this may be why they didn't see an impact of decaf versus caffeine going on. Now, in this channel, as you guys have heard me talk many times before, I've talked about all of the wonderful benefits of coffee going on in terms of kidney disease, brain health, heart health, gut, and a whole host of other things. And the recommendation is still no more than two to three cups per day. Once you start going over there, the negative side effects of coffee start to kick in. But on the positive side, remember, coffee has a bunch of interesting things. If you just look at caffeine, caffeine can actually increase the endothelial nitric oxide, which means it can help the blood vessels to be able to dilate. It can also downregulate lipogenesis, which means it can downregulate our fat building inside our body going on. And of course, caffeine has antioxidant properties. But remember, coffee is so much more than caffeine. Coffee has all sorts of amazing polyphenols, such as chlorogenic acid going on. It has all sorts of antioxidants, such as ferulic acid and micro elements like magnesium, which we have other videos on that show how much benefit they are. Put them all together and they can help to lower our oxidative stress and they can regulate our metabolism. So the bottom line of this study and of all the studies we've talked about coffee on this channel is, is Think of coffee as something that can help you as part of your daily healthy habits. There is a sweet spot, even though in this study it was up to five cups. But when you look at all those other studies that we've reviewed, the sweet spot is really around two to three cups. As always, thank you so much for watching this channel and subscribing to it and liking it and sharing it with your friends and, of course, listening to the podcast. And if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below, and I'll be sure to cover them next time. Thank you.